Hey guys, welcome to Baguette United. Welcome to another video. And today it's time to talk about the Real Madrid squad. About you know they won the super the super cup game semi-final against Valencia. I was planning on doing maybe a match review about it, but I don't think it was much interesting to anyone. The Real Madrid fans, I think that they will think that it was a very comfortable game. I definitely think so. Valencia, I think, were pretty bad. Especially in that goal where they got distracted and it was like, you know, flashbacks of Anfield, I think. But, anyways, uh, the video is going to be kind of inspired by the comment section about some people saying that why are we not doing things like Madrid? Madrid are making all these young signings while we're like stuck with like their old players. And to a point, you it's right. It's right to think that way. Especially because I know that a lot of Barcelona fans compare themselves to Real Madrid in the sense that They've been winning those Champions League trophies, and I think that Madrid have been better than us. I surely don't think so. I think that we still have been better than Real Madrid. Not by, not by an absolute much, but we've been better in the sense that we play better football for the most part. Except for this season and last season, which I think that we've been pretty terrible in terms of play. I still better than Madrid, but in terms of what we've been able to compete in all competitions, like in the trajectory for like the past 10 years, we've still been better than Real Madrid by a lot, in my opinion, as always. And this is judging their signings, their signing policy, because a lot of people seem to think that, like, when I hear like Barcelona fans talking about, let's, I wish that we signed this player, I wish we signed that player, I wish we did that, we did that, we did that. I think you guys are underestimating first our team as a collective because we have unbelievable players already as it is there is very few changes that we actually need made to make this team like like it's more the mentality than the players themselves we have a world-class squad i remember they have a world-class squad but adding youngsters for the sake of adding youngsters talented at that it's not much of a progression so let's go over their, you know, over their team, and then I'll go and tell you my reasoning behind it. In net, they have Thibaut Courtois and Lunin. At right backs, they have Carvajal, Odriozola, and Hakimi. At center backs, they have Ramos, Baran, Nacho, Militao, and Vallejo. At left backs, they have Marcelo, Mendy, and Reguilon. In midfield, they have Casemiro, Cross, Modric, James. Isco, Valverde, Ceballos, Odegaard, Reynier. In the forward line, they have Rodrigo, Lucas Vázquez, Vinicius, Asensio, Takekubo, Eden Hazard, Brahim, Bale. In the forward line, they have Karim Benzema, Luka Jovic, Mariano Díaz, and Borja Mayoral. And by your, what you're looking at there, for me, is a team that has depth, definitely. But in this point, they have far too much depth. And having strength in depth is not something that I think is bad. Definitely. But you guys know what I think about strength in depth. For me, the best Barcelona teams in history were the ones where you had the strength in depth of about 18 starter players. Or about 17, 18 players of real good quality. And then the rest was La Masia. That for me has been the best, not this, like this, things of having 22 starters. I think that's that's bad because the 22 are not going to be happy with their minutes, and I realize that this is going to happen. So, do they have a lot of talented youngsters? Lunin, Odriozola, Hakimi, Militao, Mendy, Reguilón, Valverde, Ceballos, Odega, Reynier, Rodrigo, Vinicius, Asensio, Cubo, Brahim, Jovic. Yes, they have a lot of good, talented youngsters, but I think it's too many of them. Because with, with Zidane, which looks like he's going to be staying here for next season, regardless if they win anything or not, because it seems like there is a good, you know, a good vibe at Real Madrid right now with Zidane, is it going to be good 
for like how are you gonna because all these players are good and all but are you gonna give them chances are these players gonna be given chances at Real Madrid Courtois I think that he's not gonna leave so Lunin is not gonna get a spot in the team immediately or something you have Carvajal as a starter that is gonna play most of the minutes and then you have the likes of Odriozola and Hakimi fighting for one position Odriozola he might leave, might not leave, Hakimi might get sold, I don't know that the thing is that already one or two of those players because Carvajal plays a lot of minutes then Odriozola and Hakimi play literally nothing then you center back you have Ramos Ambaran with Nacho as a rotation and Mita as a fourth center back alright I do think Ramos has to decrease the amount of minutes in order to increase the minutes of Militao, but overall it's not too bad. I think Vallejo will get sold in the summer probably, or get or sent out alone again. And at left backs you have the likes of Marcelo, Mendy and Reguilon. Same problem at right backs. Marcelo is probably going to be staying for another season. And then you have Mendy and Reguilon, who are going to get Mendy having, a, I think, a good season. For Real Madrid and they're going to having a really good season at City, especially at the beginning of the season. So who's going to come and fight for that spot? And then you have your midfield of for right now it's Casemiro and Cross and Cross as staples. I think that both of them are going to be staying for next season. We don't know if Modric is going to get renewed his contract. Maybe, maybe not. If they lose Modric, there seems a big possibility that they're going to sign the likes of Paul Pogba. James might leave. Isco is probably going to stay. Valverde is probably going to stay. Ceballos might get sent low, might stay. Odegaard is probably going to stay. Reynier is, is definitely going to stay, kind of. So, what is going to be the policy there? Like, with Casemiro and Kroos, you're basically saying that you have what? One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven players fighting for one position. How are you going to do that? Because what I think is going to happen is the same thing that happened at Barcelona when we had far too many midfielders. When we had the likes of Busquets, Rakitic, Iniesta, Andre Gomez, Denis Suarez, Arda Turan, Alenia. Like, we had far too many midfielders and then we got to play with literally none of them. It was like the same midfield of Rakitic, Iniesta, and Busquets. And what you needed was just a little bit of cover, not an unbelievable amount of midfielders that at the end of the day ended up not performing to the standard because they got no game time or no consistent game time. Then in the wings, more of the same. Hazard is pretty much gonna be a staple because that's what they pay over a hundred millions for. So at left at left when you have Hazard and then you have Rodrigo, Lucas Vasquez, Vinicio, Asensio, Cubo, Brahim, Bale fighting for one position. And if Bale leaves they'll probably sign Sadio Mane, who is really strongly linked to Real Madrid. So tell me there, how, is, how are your youngsters going to develop if they get no game, no game time? And in the forward line you have Benzema, who seems like he's going to be definitely staying for next season. Jovic what, has played what? 400 minutes? Less, less than 500 minutes for sure for Real Madrid. It's been what, 4 months and less than 500 minutes? For someone that you, you're supposed to be blending into the squad, Mariano Mariano directly has played no minutes, and Borja Mayoral is gonna get sent down alone again, like every other season. So this plan of signing youngsters because of it, it looks very nice. Maybe it's dual in career mode in FIFA. It's a very nice thought for sure. And I'm not saying that these any of these are bad players. I think they're all really good players. But the problem is where the minutes can come from. Because you might be thinking, well, in the next five years, yes, in the next five years, if you don't blend them in within, if you start blending them in now and you're just gonna throw them at the deep end when the contract of these older players run out, they're not gonna be performing at their best because they've had no continuity. They have to adapt to a new team. They have to start competing by playing pretty much every single game. So it's not it's not valid to say that in the next five years, because you need to start giving them minutes now. And what I and what I just showed is that it is literally impossible to give all of these players minutes, meaning that you have a lot of talent that is gonna be failing. If I had to right now say who's gonna succeed and fail out of this Real Madrid side, I'm gonna say that Odio Sola is gonna have to leave because he's gonna fail if Akimi comes back. I think that. 
I don't know. Like the thing is that there are players that you shouldn't have bought. For example, Odrio Sola, really good right back. I don't think that it was necessary because Hakimi. I don't know why you sent him. You sent Hakimi out on loan to Borussia Dortmund because it could have been the backup for Carvajal perfectly fine, as we have we seen. Mendy, why did you sign Mendy if Regulon was already really great last season for Real Madrid? One of the, one of the only bright spots for Real Madrid last season. Why are you signing Reynier if you already have James, Isco, Modric, Valverde, Ceballos, Odegaard? Like, all these people are thinking that Odegaard is going to come and shine for next season. Well, it's going to be ahead of Valverde, who, who Madrid fans are also very excited about. Like, is Kroos going to be sold after he's having a pretty decent season? Like, Isco is showing some good games here or there. Like, I don't understand where, like, all these... Like, they're all good players, but if they don't play minutes, then when they have to play their very sporadic minutes and very limited minutes, they're probably not going to be at the maximum level of, you know, focus, concentration, of, you know, just self-belief that they can do do it on their own. You have the likes of Vinicius, Rodrigo, fighting for one position. Then you have Asensio, who they also think that he's very talented youngster, Take Kubo, Brahim, Gareth Bale, by... Who is going to play in this spot? Like, this is a lot of money that you've done and probably in midfield, I wouldn't have said Reynier, I would get rid of James and Isco, I would probably get rid of Modric and then have a midfield of Casemiro, Cross, Odegaard, Valverde, and maybe then you bring in a Paul Pogba. Maybe, like that's, that's the only way that I see this Real Madrid midfield working because you have to reduce a lot of players. Like these are far too many players in our four Real Madrid. In the four line, more the same. Like after signing Vinicius and Rodrigo, I understand they had the hazard signing was well, sort of needed because they do need a, like effective chance creation up top. But then why are you signing Kubo? You have to let go of Asensio. You have to let go of Brahim. You have to let go of Bale. You have to let go of Lucas Vasquez if you're gonna have these players trying to get maximum opportunities up top. Jovic is a really good forward. I wanted him for Barcelona, but he needs to get more minutes. If he doesn't start to get progressive minutes, then when you throw him in with no continuity, with no, with no, when the player has no trust in himself, then that's what's going to happen, and it's going to be very detrimental for the team. So it's my opinion again. It's not my place to be judging Real Madrid. It's just my opinion from the outside looking in. And this is what I see. I see a team that has a lot of youngsters, but that just having a lot of youngsters doesn't guarantee that the next for the for ne next couple seasons that they're gonna be at their best potential when those older players leave. But anyways, we don't send done. Leave me all your opinions about this Real Madrid squad, about the Barcelona squad. Do you think that they need to sign more players? Do they need to get let go of some players? Who would they be? Leave me all your opinions in the comment section below. Comment, like and subscribe. And I'll see you next one, Blaugranas.